then build instructions. When you evaluate something with Nix, first you write the expression, then you evaluate it, and then you build what you evaluated. The result of evaluation is derivation. Derivations themselves don't have any actual effect. They don't give you something that you can use. You have to build them in order to have a, a useful build result. Uh, the file system is isolated. You can't touch things on the file system you didn't tell Nix you were going to touch. And we'll get into that. The network is isolated too. You can't touch the network unless you tell Nix exactly what you're going to produce by accessing the network. And we'll get to that. This is a trivial derivation, and, and really trivial. So up here, how does this thing work? No. All right, so up here is the derivation keyword. I think it took me two. Oh, yeah, derivation function, thank you. Uh, the derivation function, I think it took me two and a half years before I ever actually wrote the derivation function. So this is super low level. You will probably never need to write this. But at the very most lower level of Nix, this is what's going on. Uh, each derivation has a name. If you've seen a Nix store path, the end of it is the name. It has a builder. In this case, it's bin sh. Nix gives you a slash bin sh just to bootstrap, bootstrap yourself for the very first stuff. In Nix packages, we use that like once. Uh, then we have some arguments that we pass to bash. So dash c, and then a command, echo hello to out. Well, this is, we're covering a lot here, so we'll, we'll revisit what this means. When this actually is built by Nix, it will run bin sh dash c echo hello to out. And then the final keyword, or final value in the derivation is system. And system is, describes your local system. Nix has a concept of what operating system and uh, architecture your system is. So you might see an i686 Linux. You might see an x86 for uh, Darwin, uh, for Mac OS. Uh, maybe one day we'll see a RISC, RISC V dash Linux, maybe, or Power 9 dash Linux. I think that would be pretty neat. Um, all right. First, so this out variable, we briefly touched on that. When Nix builds a derivation, it sets certain environment variables in the process that it starts. A, certain, a special one is out. Out is where you write your build result to. You can't write to anywhere else permanently on the file system except where Nix is expecting your build products to go to. There's a few advanced cases for build output, like libraries and headers. We're not going to cover those. They're very much like out, and, and out will, will satisfy that. Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Out is a, a location on disk. It is a name. It is up to you to decide if it's a file or a directory. So when you echo, yep. it is a file. Yes, we'll create a file. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. What is the, the bin sh? Uh, in, in, what is bin sh? How is it interpreted? Uh, so Nix, uh, in the configuration, it has a uh, way to define some a couple impure paths. And so one of those is bin sh. In your Nix config, it, it just passes in your probably your host's bin sh. Okay. Um, but uh, oh gosh, one second. Goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, that should be fixed. <laughs> All right. Um, does that make sense? Okay. So th again, this is just a bootstrapping bin sh. That's never used beyond the very first steps in Nix packages. Yeah. Uh, Well, so where do I get a bin SA from? I, I don't have one. <coughs> I can't access anywhere else on the file system, and I need to start somewhere. So, sure, yeah, okay, so one option is I could have, so like maybe this is in like default.nix, and right next to it is a file that's sh, right? So I could I could do that, yeah. For Nix packages, uh, we we don't do that. Um, but this is again, this is all super low level, and and we get away from this almost immediately. And any real system with Nix will get away from this almost immediately. I just want to make sure that this like idea is is sensible. So this out, yeah. What does that define? What does out mean? Yeah. So Nix. that be defined? Uh, out is defined by Nix. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that ends up being like uh, the a symlink called result, which then points to like slash nix slash store, and then some big hash, right? Yeah, so when you build this inside the build, it will say out will be nix store a big hash dash hello. Mm. 
And then after the build is completed, it will symlink re results in your current directory to, to that path. All right? Cool. Hello. Hello. All right. This is more familiar probably if you've used mixed packages. This is probably what closer to what you're writing. Maybe not exactly, but that's okay. First, we use this let and in construct that we covered previously. We import Nix packages. Is this familiar? Mm -hmm. We then use the run command attribute on packages from Nix packages. We call it hello, and we echo hello to out. This is this is how you would if if we were to implement this in Nix packages itself. This is probably how we would do it. Maybe not exactly, but pretty close. Any questions about this? Yeah. So the run command uh, function takes three parameters. It does. Sorry. Yeah. So it accepts a name. Okay. It accepts an attribute set where you can provide, for example, some build inputs or some other other data, and then a string, which is the command that you execute, and that will be executed by Bash. Is the build inputs option necessary? In this case, no. But I'm going to build on it soon. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to be too surprising. This could be a completely empty attribute set, and that would be fine. But it, you do need to have an attribute set. So what's going to happen when I run this? Yeah. Where well, there's uh, no semicolon at the end of the, uh, uh, you know, the arguments. Sure. Yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. So Nix uh, is a functional language, so everything needs to return a value. And uh, in Nix, uh, in order for the file to return a value, there's no semicolon at the end. So is the run command defined somewhere else, or is it this definition is the run command definition? Yeah, so run command is defined in Nix packages. Okay. Any further questions about this? Yes. Yeah. What is Nix packages? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a perfectly reasonable question. So Nix packages is uh, the package set that's built for Nix. Um, so there's, there's Nix, which is a, a build tool. Uh, there's Nix packages, which is a collection of tens of thousands of packages already with Nix expression written. And then there's Nix OS, which is built on top of Nix packages. And if you're confused about docs, that might help answer questions about where you get answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is Nix packages the only place where I actually see it between? Sure. We will cover that later. In, for now, let's assume that this Nix packages thing is just a, a magic path. Mm -hmm. All right. Stable. If you do uh, a git checkout of next packages, you could replace this uh, with the path to your git checkout. Well, I'm, I'm, I was more curious to figure out where it is actually set. Where it's it's, it's um, an environment variable that's named in links underscore path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'll, I'll get to that later. Uh, okay. Uh, so what, what is this going to happen when we run Nix build on this? Yes, exactly. So we do Nix build. Is this font okay? Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. So that's exactly right. So we build that example. It says we're going to build this hello derivation. There's that name. There's this big hash that we don't know how it's computed. Uh, it builds it, and then it produces this output path, hello. And then exactly, it creates this result symlink with the con with where the contents is hello. Yeah. The hello is a uh, where's hello? This hello? Find found. Yeah, this one. This one here. So this echo hello. Ah, okay. So it writes the text yeah, yeah. hello to that file, and then here's that file after it's been built. Yep. Sorry. All right. That's the file. Yeah. So this this hello is in. Let's step back a second. We have this output path here. This file is symlinked to result, and inside that file is the text hello. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, here's another example. So very similar to the hello example, except instead of echo, we're using copy, cp. So we're going to copy the talk.md to out. What do you think will happen when I run this? It's going to fail. It's going to fail. Go ahead. Unless, unless the uh, there it's not going to fail. It will copy the, uh, the local talk in the file to the output in the store mm -hmm. and link the result as a directory in other file, right? That's a good guess. 
Any other guesses? <laughs> I think it just fail. Because I, I'm guessing <laughs> it's not built in the directory you think it's been built in, and then the file's not JSON, so it can't find the file. And then if you need that file, you have to. Uh, That's exactly right. Oh, right. Yeah. It's not built in the same location, so that file's not there. I hope I did a, the right example. I did not. Okay, so here's another secret. Even if I put the absolute path to that file, it would still fail. Okay. Yeah. Because it's built in a true root, right? It's built in the sandbox. Yeah. yeah. Would it work if you disable the sandbox? Uh, I won't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not real Nix. <laughs> uh, so using, going back to some of the syntax Jonas was talking about, we have this dollar brace and the brace at the end. This is saying copy the file from the current directory where this text is into the Nix store and then copy it from that wherever it imports it into the Nix store to out. Does that make sense? Any questions about this? Can we just uh, construct this a bit? So yeah. because this is um, the dollar uh, brackets mm -hmm. means okay. uh, it means insert uh, convert uh, whatever I give uh, into the brackets to a string. Yes. It's it's a product. Sort of. So so this is uh, from here to here we're finding a string. Okay. And between between these brackets we can put Nix expressions. Okay. Uh, any Nix expression. Okay, and that's a uh, and a path is a Nix is is a value. So oh. it's a Nix expression. Yep, a path, okay. yep, it's a value and a Nix expression. And what that's saying is this is a path I want, and when I put it into a string, it will copy it into the Nix store and, and give me a, a Nix store yeah. right there. But if the file isn't there, you will still get an error. Yes, okay. yes. If this file does not exist, it okay. will be an error, okay. for sure. Uh, yeah? Is there any other way to interpolate that Nix um, uh, input without using a common use bash shell uh, expansion mm. uh, this here yeah so you can't turn that off but you can escape this and there are other ways we could pass this file in. Uh, I don't think I cover it but I would be happy to do some more demos after uh, another question yes uh, if you're using this dollar curly syntax do you recommend from the stuff you're passing there in your built in no is this automatic? It is automatic. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so I'm doing this better than that. Yeah. Good yeah. Time. This is called string context. And I think I cover it better later. But Nix has this idea that this string depends on the result of this. And if this is a file or a thing that needs to be built, Nix will know that if it's trying to do something with this in a build, it has to first do whatever it has to do to provide produce that. And go ahead. Would it make sense to not relate to the Discord in a future release of the next language to have something that is not the same as we currently have for expansions and shell? I guarantee you that, that we will never undo this. Because it's we do it again. Shell block. I understand, and, and unfortunately, that's, that's no. long settled. No. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Just a bit of topic. What's the difference between three column and seven, two column notation for the stream? Uh, you mean this is just remember that oh, there, cool. was, there was yeah. three column notation. Uh, you mean like three spaces in? Yeah, no, no, uh, no three uh, quotes, sorry. Oh, oh, quotes these, quotes. like these two quotes versus yeah. those two quotes. No, this, no, 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 like I three, mean, repeat it. No, three single no, quotes. Three single quotes versus three single quotes. No, no, it's three. There is no, there is no such thing. That's five. That's five. So we only have two single quotes. Yeah. All right. Any other questions about this expression? Okay. I have a question about the result. Can yeah. Show the result on that? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. just wrong. And then I've asked the question. Okay, so when we build this, this is it's pretty simple. We we build this derivation. This is the build product. I didn't show cat in the file because it would spoil my talk. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is and maybe covered it uh, in the first part, but it wasn't here. What you show on top is a derivation. Yep. That's my sum of this the file. This is so the expression. What's the, what the relation between that expression stored in a file mm -hmm. and the uh, next store uh, derivation file? This DRB? Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it the same or? Uh, when, so uh, the build commands become a derivation. The derivation 
is the result of evaluating. So this is an expression. Okay. You, if it gets evaluated. It produces derivations. The derivations describe what you want to build, and okay. then Nick's build builds those derivations. Follows the instructions. So derivation is something like a binary or bytecode of that, including the whole closure, or uh, sort of. I actually show one at the end. Oh, uh, right. Actually, in my next talk. Um, ah, okay. But yeah. it, but it, it basically sums up everything that you've written here. It sums up all that. Okay. Up. I was just wondering whether if I if I change uh, white space yeah. in that uh, the derivation would still have the same hash because it's like produced like a bytecode. Good question. Or, no. well, we have a few people in the hall. Can we make a little bit more space? Uh, is that possible? Um, uh, but is this covered later? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a really good question. So if you change white space in here or up here, it won't make a difference. Yeah. If you change anything in here, like you add some more spaces here, then that will change the hash. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, the output path, the store path mm -hmm. of the total.md file is not shown in the next field output. That's true. Uh, it uh, is not a build. So it, this is copied in automatically. It's not a build. So uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't need to do anything to produce that. Um, it could be cool to like know what what is, has been put in the store. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I think if you pass a certain number of dash v's, it will tell you. I usually stick with seven. Yeah. <laughs> You added a, I think you just added a new flag, this substitute thing. Did oh, oh that? I meant to hide that. Oh, um, okay. This was, a, my network wasn't working right, and I don't want to get into that right now. Um, but that's something very interesting that we probably should talk about. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, that CP dollar talk out, can you, can you can, can mix the debug that and show me the console, like the file operations are happening? Just the debug. Uh, I, mean, I know you could probably caveman debug it by putting sure. some debug in the Nix code. No, I don't think so. Okay. Me, there might be some special tooling in Nix packages okay. that could do it, okay. but uh, okay. Nix itself does not pr okay. provide that. You could caveman debug that by doing... You could toss like a set dash X yeah. up there, right? Okay. And then it would it would show what's going on. And would come, the Nix build would take that and you'd be able to see on the console. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would, it would show a build output. I've done a kind of poor job showing you build output here, but okay. there would be a build output between the building line and the store path. Cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, does everybody know GNU Hello? It's a very popular package. <laughs> <laughs> when you run GNU Hello, in your local language, it outputs Hello World. Pretty complicated. It's actually quite a complicated package. Yeah. I was surprised. <laughs> So here, instead of echoing hello, you run the command hello, and then pipe that to out. I have it installed in my system. What is this going to do when I build it? It will fail. Fail. Other people answer, please. <laughs> you know too much. <laughs> <laughs> this will fail. Yeah. It will say hello command not found. Does it need to have hello as a build input? It does. But first. Let's try something else. So we have hello, we get the path to hello, we call exactly <laughs> that path to hello. <laughs> what will this do? Any guesses? You mentioned the absolute path doesn't work, so it does fail. It does fail. It still fails. No such file or directory. I had to delete some of the, some of the hash. Is that because of purity? That's because of a build sandbox. Every, in order for, some, for a build to have access to something on your system, you have to tell Nix that you're going to use it. And if you don't do that, you can't use it. So here, our build input's empty. We passed in this absolute path. Nix doesn't care what's in that string. It's just a regular string. So when you build it, it doesn't, tell, it doesn't allow access to that store, that store path, and it fills the build. But Nix shell works a bit differently, right? Unless you use the pure flag, or am I confused? Yeah, Nix shell, Nix shell doesn't use the sandbox right. in the same way. If, if we use uh, interpolation, then it would work, but then we need to know what we would need to interpolate, correct? Mm, sure. Okay. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's get to one possible solution. That's another good solution. So here, we've done something a little bit different. In build inputs, we passed packages.hello. Packages.hello is a package defined in Nix packages. And if you were to install that, you would get Nix packages, or you would get hello. In fact, you would get that hello. So, what's going to happen when I run this one? Why would it fail? 
That's an interesting. I'm curious. Because with opacity, the path would be a low binary within your shell. Mm. Yeah. It's not set. So you should yes, you should draw the zook mm -hmm. packages dot hello zook yep. slash bin slash hello. It's true. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. One tricky one one magic trick of things like this is build inputs. They automatically get put into the path. So this actually will work. And when I when I run build it and cap the result, I get hello world. Another good uh, another solution to this is exactly what you said. I could have done the the braces packages dot hello close brace slash bin slash hello, and then that would have worked too. And it would not have needed to put hello into build inputs. What's the difference between build negative inputs and build inputs? That has to do with cross compiling and is too advanced for this talk. <laughs> Sorry? It was just an excellent word. Uh, yeah, and it's quite complicated. Um, so it works in a similar way, but not exactly the same way. All right. Does this make sense? Yeah. Cool. Going back to the, the idea of interpolating hello right here, that would remove packages hello from build inputs. But because of the string context that we've mentioned before, Nix would know that this string depends on that store path. And so when it executes the build, it will know it needs that path and put it into the sandbox. What's going to happen when I run this? It will fail. Why will this fail? That's true. Yeah, so this was a bit of a game. Curl's not in there. So let's, let's go do the next one. All right, so added curl. Now what will this do? Fail. Why is this going to fail? And why don't I network access? Why? Yeah, but, but how would I how would I fix that? I have to tell Nix exactly what I'm going to produce before I can access the network. So exactly, couldn't connect the server. I used to use like gramc.com, but then it's a more different, more confusing error. But anyway, so yeah, one to one, one to one, great time timing for that to come into existence. That's really nice thing. Yeah. That's offshore scripts like reaching out and downloading something that might be. Sure. Yeah, exactly. It prevents scripts from, from accessing the network unless you exactly know that it's going to. Uh, and it's especially kind of fun, especially if you're using uh, Nix to install node packages or Ruby gems or something <laughs> like that, which <laughs> periodically have a tendency to upload your environment. Yeah. <laughs> which is interesting, because even if, Nix, if, even if it could upload your environment, it would have nothing interesting in the environment. And because you're not affecting it from the outside, the, the build output is more pure because the only thing that the output is is that. this SHA-256 uh, attribute value. And the, the contents of this, this string is the hash that I'm going to fetch from gramc.com. And uh, so, so this, is, this is the way you tell, yeah? Uh, does everyone know what the hash is? Mm. Does someone not know what the hash is? I think mean, that's okay. Okay. All right, great. <laughs> um, so, uh, I build that. It successfully tries to download something from my website. It uh, succeeds and produces a result. Yes. So that hash needs to be the, the hash of the, the value from what the, the URL is. Yeah. So the content of the URL. Yeah. What if the content of the URL changes, like header? Yeah. Sure. Or, or blog post. Or, you know? Yeah. Let's uh, let's see if I can. Um, I mean, I assume it will fail, but do you need to update the hash every time? Yeah. Well, that's sort of the point, I think, so that you don't like rely on something that you think is safe and then some bad actor changes it to something dangerous but without you knowing. Sometimes you want to access, I don't know, things that dynamically change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then kind of the 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 <laughs> okay. So you can handle this, but you would have to do it before, uh, like before actually doing the bits. 
to have a expected bar where you prepare the hashes. So, so right now I have this uh, have this hash, and this this should work. I'm not going to test it because maybe I broke it. But so so we can pretend that this is the right hash, and if we built that, it would have it would produce the contents of gramc.com. And if I change this hash a little bit, I don't know where my cursor is because I screwed around with uh, color schemes. Oh, there we go. That'll do. So I just changed that hash. I'll do it again. Uh, oops, I did it too many times. So so now that hash is wrong. So what do we think will happen if I build this? It'll say, you gave me this, but I expected that. So you can just change it. Oops. <laughs> That's not what I expected. <laughs> me neither. Uh-oh. Uh, one second. Anyone know the trick to doing this in Emacs? Writing out the the tofu. Oh no! Anyone remember the hash file? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that works. Yeah, so it's a fine idea. Man, I don't even have a cursor and I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm still actually going to uh, break this hash. So, change that. It's already bad. even better. I have never trouble, so ignore the substitutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Let's download some internet. <laughs> All right, so we're building gramc.com here, that DRV. So that's the instruction for building. That contains the hash that we expect and how to fetch it. It's still unhappy with me for whatever reason. Mm, there we go, got some curl. <laughs> Fingers crossed, my internet's what, been a bit happy. What file is that fetching? It's a very packed, it's not like uh, my website got a file or anything like that. Index. Index and HTML. Index. Oh, what? Okay. I reckon it's done. I'm wondering if my uh, VPN is active, so let me see if I can fix go. that. Oh, there there you go. Go. Ah, oh perfect. I mean, I disabled my VPN too. We're good. We're got this. All right. So exactly. So we got hash, mismatch, and fixed output derivation. This hash, we've told it what's going to produce. That means it's called a fixed output derivation. We already know the output. It says, all right, that gramc.com output. Uh, we told we told Nix it was going to have this hash. It didn't. It had this hash. Can I have a question about hashes? Yeah. Like why why base forty two for the hashes? Uh, <laughs> SHA two six is long. Sorry, I'm sorry. SHA-256 is, is long, and uh, the ones that Nick's use are shorter. Yeah, but that doesn't justify all the hassle. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Be, because, because now you, you know, use text encoding mm -hmm. in the derivation, but the output uses uh, this one. Yeah, so yeah, so you can use... And, and you also can if, I, if, I, if I package uh, Python, mm -hmm. I, uh, I prefer to use hashes oh. from, from the PyPy. Or use them. Use them. Well, uh, there is a bot changing them. Uh, mm. well, well, we can talk about that later. All right. Yes. Why do we need to, like, why does the idea of a fixed output derivation exist? So why, why is this mentioned? What's the, yeah. what's the point? Yeah, sure. Why should I know about it? Yeah, cool. Um, uh, before I get to that, are there other questions about where we've gotten to so far? Yeah, not nice. variable, but, uh, variable hash URL or variable derivation. No. And that's actually the same answer for, for him, so I'll get to that in a moment. Any, any other questions about this? 
That's also the same question. This is good. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. I have a question about fetching resources. Yeah. Is there a plan to phase out HTTP? Like, I mean, it's not. Uh, it's but not. It's not. Let's talk after. All right. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to say it's not a security issue because you have a hash, but still it's a privacy issue because okay, uh, that's a different problem. Yeah, well, well can, let's yeah. talk after. All right. Can, yeah. Can you keep it because it really helps with proxy? I just put the map. We'll talk about we'll all talk right. about later. That's not the <laughs> track stuff. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so okay. So a lot of questions around uh, why hashes? Why not variable hashes? And that sort of train of thought. The reason it does this is because every build, all of these hashes are hashes of what produced them. So on this curl path, this hash, that is a hash of everything that was used to build curl, including the hash of the source that was used to build curl, including the version of bash that was used to build curl. So if if the source of curl is not deterministic, if we don't know what that hash is ahead of time, we, we can't know what this hash will be until, until we've fetched curl, until we've, we've fetched curl, imported it, and hashed it, and substituted that hash in. Um, because that, the, these store paths are how we know that we're building in isolated environments, and that it will never stop on each other. Um, there is a way to use, do an impure fetch URL, but it slows down the evaluator, it's not acceptable in Nix packages, and it makes your builds unreproducible. So uh, I don't recommend it, and uh, I'm not going to cover it. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? Let's fix this. Uh, all right, so I've got, uh, uh, it got this hash, it wanted this hash, so let's just copy the one it wanted, or the one it got, actually. And, uh, uh oh. <laughs> Five, okay. Oh, ah, here we go. So let's do this build again. What's going to happen when I build this? Well, what you should do is w get your index as well and see if the hash is matched. Uh, see if you've got an interrelated proxy chain you're going to do. Well, that's a bit more. Well, well, that's not a beginner level <laughs> stuff. What's going to happen when I build this? I built that. It failed to build. So what's going to happen next time I try to build it? That's already. It's done already. What a what a what an idea! <laughs> and that's exactly right. It's done already. Nix downloaded it, got a different hash, and said, "That's okay. I can pretend you meant that hash. I'm still going to fail, but I'll write it to where it would be." So pretend you're downloading uh, like the LaTeX package, which is two gigabytes for some reason, and you get to the end of that build and it failed and it didn't. You have to download that two gigabytes. I live in the mountains. I don't have enough internet to download two gigabyte files twice. So it saves it. It, it fails that evaluation, but once you update the hash in place, it has, mm -hmm. has already fetched it. Is it not the heap output? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it depends on the heap output. No, I don't think so. Oh. But that's not the guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> but that means that even though you fail, you do have the thing in your next store, mm. which you can use to then. Sure. Yeah. So, but notice. Hash mismatch and fixed output derivation. It has a 2BAYC, okay. right? And this is 2BAYC. <coughs> but this is where, it, this is the actual hash of the file. It was trying to build a different path. It was trying to build uh, like a yeah, sure. AMY something something, and it didn't end up in that path. So none of the builds that depend on the AMY path it will work. Will work. Okay. Yeah. Is this the standard procedure? How do you replace the uh, hashes? Yes. So this is a possible trust model that you could use called trust on first use, or tofu. So <laughs> under, <laughs> under the tofu model, you, you can decide, OK, I fetched it once. It's probably good. Take that hash, put it in, and then you're good. You're done. If you have something like a package reg registry like PyPy, or Ruby gems, or Bundler, or things like that, uh, they will often publish has hashes ahead of time, so you can take those hashes and put them right in. But if you don't have a hash ready, then you can use the trust on first use model. Any other questions? 
I mean, but <laughs> then what's the point of having hashes if you just like okay, let's use this one. Right? Sure. Yeah. So and if you're making you that one, that package is hacked, and you use the hack hash version. It's about your expectations. So if if you are say packaging a new thing and you don't have a hash ready, you need to establish trust somehow. So you can find the hash on the website. You can download and hash it yourself, which is what's happening here, or. Uh, you don't really have any other options, right? You could use fetch it and validate some GG signatures, something like that. But if so, if you're building your own package and you you have just put in a bogus hash, you're expecting the hash to be wrong. If you're building a package out of Nix packages and you get a bad hash, something is wrong. Yeah, and you, you're generating the package here. Yeah. So if I get your uh, default .nix and I run it and it's changed, then that's more of a problem because it's changed from when you thought you were combining this thing. And that's a very interesting property. So it's about establishing that first trust. Hey, I have a question. I'm still not clear like, about the difference between a fixed output derivation mm -hmm. and just a derivation. Sure, sure. So uh, that's a good, good point. So uh, this will never rerun anything. So say curl has changed. We already know the hash of the result. We know that the version of curl has no impact on what the hash will be, right? So if, if even if every dependency of FedURL has become new, or we're on, we built this first on NixOS 16.03, and uh, we are now building it again on NixOS 19.09, it will stay the same. It will not rebuild, because we already know the hash. But uh, up here, we don't actually care exactly what the hash is. We just know that what we want to do. So if we, what we could do, if we wanted to, is we could stick a hash in here, and it would only build that <coughs> one time ever. And if it ever outputted anything other than hello, it would be a problem. But we probably don't care. We probably don't care if hello changes its output format or uh, it adds some leading space or something like that. We just we know the instructions we want to run. So here we don't specify the hash. We tell it instead what we need and what we want to do. versus here, where we don't actually care about what we're using to do it, we just care about what we get. Does that make sense? Can you speak louder, please? Yeah, sorry? So you said, yeah, the store class of a fixed output derivation is the hash of the content produced by that derivation rather than the input of the derivation. Exactly, exactly. So this, this path here is the hash of, it, this is the hash of what we produced. Versus in the hello example, this, this store path is the hash of what was used to do the build. Yes? Yeah, so it looks like fetch URL is using curl under the hood to fetch that URL. Sure. So I assume there's a curl somewhere in the next store which is used to do that. Yes. But this curl is not part of the hash. Correct. Because any same implementation of fetch URL would produce the same output anyway, so sure. we don't need it. Yeah. Sure. And that's that's kind of the point of these fixed output derivations. Right? Yeah. I, I don't care what fetch URL is doing. I don't care if it fetches from that URL. I don't care about anything. I just care about that this file. This file of this hash. The file is there and has this hash. And exactly. So, so there are some interesting things here. I, fetch URL, actually. Do you see this trying HTTP colon slash slash gramc.com? That's because it has internally a list of mirrors. And if gramc.com doesn't work, it will fall back to a mirror and look for a file with that hash name. And if it's in a mirror content addressed by this hash, it'll fetch that in just the same. But, but if fetch URL is using curl from the next door, yeah. but it doesn't reflect the fact Yes. Isn't this impure? It is not impure because we already know exactly what will be produced. The, the derivation, this DRV here, it does say I need curl, but the output does not have any relationship to curl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this, that's not magic. I can do stuff like this in my own mix You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not something built in magical that no. everyone can do. Yeah. There's, uh, there's three parameters that I haven't written because it's advanced, but it's called output hash algo and output hash something something. 
And if you set those parameters, you've created a fixed output derivation. It's not really isn't the whole input, it's a transport. It's a transport of jet or something. Yeah. So, so that in a different way. We'll talk about it. One, imp one important note. Excuse me. One important note about implementing your own fixed output derivations is you don't want to do any processing because this hash is representing the output. So maybe I added some extra steps here, like I took the input and reversed it. If the hash already exists on the file system, it won't build it again, even if you've changed how you wanted to build it. So it can add it can it can add some tr trouble if you try to be too fancy in your fixed output builds. Any further questions? Yeah. Oh, the sure. Last yeah. So right now we're just fetching this this file. We're yeah. telling it it has, has its hash, right? Say tomorrow we decide, you know what? Actually, I want to do a dump process and pull up the text in the body. I could possibly write a, a, a expression which does it in the fixed output derivation. However, because this hash already exists, Nick says I'm done. It won't it won't rerun that fetch. It won't rerun the processing to get the text out of the body. It will just say that hash exists, so we're done. So if you try to do fancy things in your fetcher, you can often, uh, it becomes very easy to hurt yourself. Yeah, right, but it's, it's my fault because I should have updated the hash. Yeah. You yeah. should, yes. Yeah, so as far as Nix is concerned, exactly. It's your fault. Um, in, terms of, in terms of API design, your, your fetcher should do as minimal work as possible. Yeah. So, so basically, the built input is basically the content of the hash, mm -hmm. and the fetch URL is like a hint where to update, obtain the content if there is none. Yet, basically. So this DRB does have actual <coughs> instructions. It says I depend on curl. It says uh, I'm going to curl that URL. It also says I'm going to put that hash. So this derivation uh, does include all of those dependencies and everything. It's not a hint. It has all those yeah, I mean, like uh, philosophically. Like mm. What all I care about is the is the content of the hash. Yeah, I, I don't really. It's not important whether it's Graham C or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Where is the name of the uh, derivation coming from? The Graham C dot com dot in the end. Yeah. The, uh, so the Graham C dot com. Where does that come from? Yeah. So uh, the definition of fetch URL strips out the the HTTP colon slash slash bit. Uh, plus a little bit other processing, and then Snap uses that as, as a name for the derivation. So the return uh, from a fetch URL function has a derivation name in it. Attribute derivation name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> I actually drawing on HTTP, and HTTPS could return a completely different result. It could. A different web strategy, and this is discovered in different files. Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, you do want to be careful to get the right hash. You, yeah, you should. So, so the name of the derivation is just the host or the full file? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, actually, I do know. I it's if, if, if there's like a path at the end, it's the file name. It's the last piece of the path. Oh, OK. Yeah. If there were a change in curl that, that reads like, for example, let's say by default for now starts Outputting not just the content but the headers and the content, mm -hmm. so like all the hashes would like be different yeah. on two different versions of the curl. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So so if in that case, if you had the old hash and you had the old build product, it would uh, it would succeed because you already had it. If you had the old hash and you didn't have the old build, it would f try and fetch it again and say this isn't right. So you are relying on curl actually not changing. So in fact. No, 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 no. We're, we're relying on that hash being correct. So, so if curl does the wrong thing, curl's doing the wrong thing. But that hash is what we need out of. Yeah. So we need to fix that. You have to rerun the build. Let's say you have subsidiary mm -hmm. zero. Mm -hmm. If you want to rerun the build, yeah. and you are going to fetch grahamc.com again, yeah. it's going to produce a new uh, hash. Mm -hmm. So it will not do it. Uh, we would need to fix fetch URL to do the right thing. Right, but that this means we have like in this particular situation, we have it works on my machine, right? Uh, we, I mean, sure, yes. But also, if curl, <laughs> if your fetches are doing the wrong thing, they're doing the wrong thing. So yeah, right. But yeah. If, if I'm developing and yeah. curl was fine, and then I had it in the next door, and mm -hmm. then I update the curl, and then it would break, but I wouldn't notice, deliver the thing, and it would break at the customer. Well, presumably, you would have, you would have, you upgrade curl, you, and you would test it. Yeah, right. But if I test it on my machine, yeah. I wouldn't notice, because... If you upgrade curl? You would test it. Yeah. 
this isn't this isn't picking a curl from your file system. It's not picking user bin curl. It's right. picking the curl in Nix packages. Yeah, right. So it's um, uh, yeah, okay. <coughs> okay. But, yeah, but Nix packages can change. You don't pin it down to a commit, right? That, that's true. So yeah, that's. But again, so uh, presumably you've tested it. And again, actually, if it ends up going to the customer and the hash is wrong and it fails, it feels pretty okay. This is a pretty okay failure, like all things considered. Yeah. If, if you start getting the wrong hashes, that's okay. This is okay. We can still fix this. Yeah. We're not in production. Better do it than to yeah. give it to the customer and actually yeah. work. Yeah. 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 Oh, change. So, oops. I mean, Go ahead. Such it's a perfect as a question. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Like, if Chrome changed, there will be a lot of unhappy people all around. Yeah, 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 go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> continue. Um, so if I just added, like, hash and hash elbows to, like, um, standard error and case derivation, that would confirm that derivation still picked up. We'll cover that later. That's, that's advanced up. <laughs> yeah. Well, just to check, the, so the fetch URL function calls NK derivation in sight, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. Because at, uh, that that is an abstraction. Who knows? Like at some level, maybe maybe it's uh, actually using this type of derivative. I don't know. I don't care. I just because I just know. We care about return values, right? Sorry. We care about return values from Cool. So this is a lot of discussion. I think this is really good. So uh, so whatever was used for fetch URL is encoded in this derivation. There are infinite number of derivations that can produce this output. As long as the hash is the same, it will always produce that same output. I understand, but the, if I assign this to an attribute, the yeah. result of that URL, what mm -hmm. will I will get? Oh, oh, okay. So, so then, then you get something that would represent that. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? You mentioned using mirrors, so you can have like multiple sources. Sure. How would you define? It would be like another URL or? So, yeah, so uh, you can pass in a list of URLs and it'll just try each one. You can, Nix had built in, has the idea of looking up file, a mirror by hash. So Nix has a built in list of mirrors for, for things in Nix packages, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's some resilience with it. Is it possible to provide all the functions, function, uh, compute hashes, like and bounce every? Uh, there are, so you have to use hash that Nix supports. Because this isn't a promise. Like, nothing in Nix packages promising this hash will be the same. It's guaranteeing the hash will be the same. And Nix checks that. Mm -hmm. So Nix has to know how to do the hash. Mm -hmm. Python right. supports uh, essentially 512. Yeah, 512, I think we've dropped MD5, but yeah. it's like, <laughs> uh, Nix package itself, I believe, is like 99% SHA-256. Here's something scary. Imagine a shell script, say, a Steam installer accidentally has a rmfr <laughs> slash dollar sign with a variable, and then the variable is, is undefined, and they didn't see a set dash u, and then, and then what happens? Because you've, you've run this on your system. What will happen when I run this? That's the sun box, right? It is sun box. So I don't have an example of the output, but frankly, it was pretty boring. It, it tried to delete, uh, it managed to delete the one directory it can write to, and it tried to delete everything else, and it did because it doesn't have write access. And in fact, it only has read access to a few paths. We can look at that. I think. How are we doing on time? When do I end? I think a bit over, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So to reiterate, there's file system isolation. You can only access things in a build which you have explicitly declared that you depend on. And the rest of the system is completely invisible. You can't see home directories. You can't see users. You can't. You can't see any of that stuff. Yeah. What if you include the uh, root directory in Kali basis? Sorry? What if you include the, uh, the root directory in Kali basis so you say that please evaluate this? Or oh, sure. So if, uh, let's see. Okay. You don't like so if this was like it. just root. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So first, well, what Nick will do during evaluation time is copy your entire system into the Nick store. <laughs> <laughs> Once it has completed copying your entire system into the next store, it will then run the build. <laughs> and in fact, if, if you did rm-rf dollar curly slash, it would still fail, because that's copied into the next store and it can't write there. <laughs> it would copy the next store. <laughs> 
<laughs> ah, no. Evaluation time, the, the write is done by essentially tarring up everything, sending it over to the daemon, and then the daemon extracts it over into the right place. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Unless you have a small system and a lot of RAM. <laughs> That'd be totally fine. Yeah, yeah that would be totally fine. Uh, and that's a cool. So it's, that's actually an interesting thing. So pass. So pretend this is an uh, example.nix. Every path in this file is relative to example.nix, no matter where you're calling nix build. All right. Any questions about this? I think this is really cool. I think this is the, my second favorite feature of Next. <laughs> What's first? That's Next. <laughs> <laughs> how, many how many minutes over? We're over. So. Uh, okay, anybody can leave if you want to. And I won't be offended. <laughs> oh, and sorry for going over. String context is my favorite. Uh, so this, uh, this has a few things going on here. We have import Next packages at the top. That's familiar. We have this fetch URL. But that's familiar. We've covered that. We have this run command, which is slow and not very useful. It sleeps for 100 seconds and then touches out. <laughs> <laughs> All right? And then we do this run command where we build stuff with dependencies. So we do that thing that we did before. We copy the text, the, or the talk file from your current directory. And then we refer to the source, the gram C source. We copy that into out slash source. And then we copy the slow thing, this bit, into out slash slow. What will happen? Like, what, what's the order in which things happen when I run this? Okay, first we fetch. Import, sorry, import first. Okay, yeah. Then we fetch. Okay. Then uh, slow is not uh, run because it's lazy. So you go under. Okay. And then you run the command. Yeah. You name the uh, output uh, directory. Yeah. Then you copy the file to the output directory and name dot and this. Mm -hmm. Then you copy uh, yeah. the, the derivation, uh, the source of derivation that was made with a uh, with, uh, fetch URL okay. to output uh, slash source. Okay. And then you, uh, you, 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 you copy the result of the sleep. Then you sleep for 100 seconds. Okay. If you, if you get the uh, File. It touches out, so it's, it's like copying itself to slow. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> what do you think will happen? Since this is your favorite feature, I would expect all of this to really? happen in parallel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the source and so when this is evaluated, the out the result that Nix build knows it needs to build is build with dependency. It doesn't care about anything other than build with dependency at build time. What it does next is it says, all right, what do I need to build that? It says, all right, you need to do this, you need to do this. It runs both. It would indeed sleep for 100 seconds. And then, when all of its inputs are prepared, then it runs this command. Yes. But does it actually first look at the left uh, definition, or does it ignore the what's in the left? And checks what's in and what it actually needs to get cool. on the left. So in terms of how the evaluator works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so indeed. So it sees its let, it sees a bunch of code, it's like, yeah. all right, I don't know about that. Whatever. <laughs> it moves on, it sees packages, it says, uh oh. I packed <laughs> something. So it goes to import packages. <laughs> all right. It, it, yeah. it, Im it imports packages. When you import Nix packages you get back a function. So here we're passing an empty attribute set to that function. So it says packages, all right, import Nix packages. And then it says, all right, I need to run command. Nix says, oh, I need to call that function. So it passes that into Nix packages. Nix packages evaluates just enough to get run command. And then it evaluates that. That's easy. Evaluates that. That's easy. Gets to this string and says, oh, I need more. All right. I need to copy that file in. It says, all right, I need to build that. I need to build that. It decides all of that at one, in, in one step, and then it does builds. So once it does the source, it goes up to source and says, ah, packages. I know packages. Fetch URL. I don't know fetch URL yet. I'll evaluate fetch URL. 
It evaluates fetch URL. It returns a derivation that needs to be built. It gets on the slow. Slow is the run command. I know run commands, but it's good. How can it do, uh, do the uh, packages and slow in parallel if it's first, uh, first do the sort and then the slow? <laughs> yeah. So the result of run command is a derivation. It doesn't, a derivation that hasn't done anything yet. All it does is it describes its inputs and what to do. So by the time the derivation is evaluated and created, it knows it needs slow and it knows it needs source. So then the build phase happens, and the build phase says, all right, these two don't depend on each other, go. So basically because of derivation, we can do parallel things because we like prepare, yep. and then okay, this and this and this, we can do parallel, so let's do it. Exactly. The, the, this derivation describes every single thing needed to build. It, this derivation says I need fetch URL, uh, the result from fetch URL. The fetch URL derivation says I need curl. Curl says I need glibc. Glibc says uh, I need bash in order to do it. Bash says I need a different bash so I can bootstrap myself. Bootstrap and bash says all right, I need uh, some other thing downloaded from the internet, which is a binary tarball, so I can actually have an, a bash to execute. So you get this huge tree of derivations. Nix walks it deeper and deeper until it gets to something it has. Once it has it, it builds everything in mass as as parallel as possible. Yeah, not cool. oh, really? <laughs> yes, please, uh, this. So when I look at this, I can't, so I would say if this was some other lazily evaluated language, I would say elimination drives evaluation and I'd be pretty happy. But when I look at this, I can't really see, right? Uh, uh, where things get evaluated. I can only see uh, where uh, evaluation happens in the derivation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I can have heuristics to reason about how it could work when I look at this. Well, you can look at this and, and know, okay, nothing, you can read this down and say, all right, source doesn't depend on anything else I've seen yet. Slow doesn't depend on anything else I've seen yet. Run command, okay, it depends on some things. And you can reason about that and know. It, it, it could be possible that you are on, uh, say, the uh, Sagean branch of Nix packages and curl hasn't been compiled yet. And you're in for an afternoon of compiling a whole bunch of packages so you can build this. That's completely transparent. Nix does the same thing in any case. Um, but as long as you're on a stable, stable, like, released version of Nix packages, you can look at this and reason quite comfortably about what it will do. Uh, there were a lot of hands, so you were, yep. Yeah. One thing I'm not clear about is uh, the fact that it run command, what does it do? Does it actually treat the commands and run it, or it just treats the command? Mm. Yeah, so this, this is a derivation which will run this command. Okay. So if we go back to hello, we have this run command. We, out, we run hello. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to working one. Um, so we have described this command we want to run. And the derivation itself runs that hello. Okay. It's not like writing a script that you can run. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Um, can you like explain the word instantiate? I think that's what's used. Oh before. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Okay. So. I realized also. Oh man, I used <laughs> jargon, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I haven't used realize. Oh. Oh okay. But right. maybe they maybe they they matter. Yeah, so Nix build uh, is a two-step phase. First, it runs Nix instantiate. That does nothing but compute stuff. Think it thinks through the Nix and produces the derivations, the DRV files. If we uh, go back to here, so here we see here it is evaluating. It's looking through all the Nix code to to uh, find what what computation needs to be done. It comes up with a list of derivations. Those are actual things that need to execute to be built. Not in Nix code, but actual commands. And then at the after all the instantiation is done, this is it, this derivation is instantiated as a result of this. So you instantiate, or you, you have this, this expression, the, the uh, Nix evaluates it, it instantiates derivations, and then that list of derivations is it's basically just looped over and built. So that's those are separate phases. And realize it's ah, realizing is you realize the derivation. It's, it's another name for building the derivation. That, that's why glue going can exist. Because that, that, that step is separated in two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he's asking about uh, Geeks, uh, which is a GNU version of Nix. 
Um, they actually, for a long time, used Nix, uh, the Nix daemon. So geeks wrote their own version of Nix built. They had their own expression language. They would create derivations, send them to the Nix daemon, which is essentially they would send these DRVs to the Nix daemon, and then the Nix daemon would build it. They could build their own version of, of, uh, of their own dream of what this should look like. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. I mean, reading a Nix code is fine, but often when you have collect Nix code, you have like, okay, why the fuck is this doing that? Yeah. Is there an easy way to see like a dependency tree? Uh, yes. Um, gosh, uh, we are super over time. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to keep going until somebody tells me to stop. What time is the next time? Do you, do you too? Uh oh. <laughs> uh, we can also come back to uh, some. We can also go back. Yeah, on. that's true. So, like, uh, so we have a few talks planned here, and also we can just hang out here and answer questions all day. That's totally. We're going to do the talks for sure. And afterward, we can just hang out and answer questions all day. Um, so, uh. Uh oh. What? It's a bug. It's a bug in five of them, I think. Oh, it's gone. We have so much time. Oh, cool. We have nothing. So, all right. So, um. Okay, so uh, question about uh, dependencies. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, so I haven't prepared for this, so it'll be a bit of a chowder, but we'll get through it. So um, we have. Uh, I really wish I could look it over here, but uh, the trade offs we make here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So we have um, we've Nix instantiated. So we've evaluated the expression. Do something. Okay. We've evaluated the network fetch, fetch URL file. It's created a list of derivations, specifically this this derivation. And uh, Nix store query. Uh, no uh, requisites. I think it's requisites, right? Like lowercase. So we can say, ask the Nix store to, oh, you know what, um, hold me one second. All right. Um, <laughs> so we can say, we can say to the Nix store, you already know about all this dependency graph stuff. Uh, why don't you tell me about it? And so we can, we can do Nix store query requisites, which, what it requires, I think. And this is everything that it requires to do that. It's a lot. Uh, in fact, uh, 246 lines of things that need to exist in order for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And again, this goes all the way from uh, bootstrap tools. This is a binary tarball of, of things that, like a very minimal compiler, a very minimal shell, all the way to uh, like the default standard end stuff, to some patches that we have. Up here we have a patch that we apply somewhere. Uh, let's see, we get uh, stage zero. Oh yeah, that's some good bootstrapping stuff. Uh, we get past stage zero into a stage one where we get a more reasonable compiler. Get that Perl in there. Bison, get text, this is all good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, we, uh, we get to, Perl should be in there somewhere. <laughs> um, but at the end, there's also dash dash three. Mm, yeah, yeah, we could think it. Uh -oh. No, it's without the requisite. Yeah, oh, there you go. Nice. So that's what I want to build. The uh, and and there you go. The the whole dependency chain of everything everything that we're going to do. And this repeats a, a lot of stuff because the the tree is yeah. complicated. Um, so there you are. Uh, and, and in fact, um, this is sort of a preview of, of uh, no, I, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I think I 
even got there. But what's not totally clear is, okay, I have now this drive file, but what I actually need is like where to find it in mixed packages. And the drive file names are not necessarily like mm. generation names. I see. Yeah, that, uh, that can be tricky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. sure. So let's just take uh, this get text .drv. I don't know. That's just one in the list. Uh, we can in, in Nix, if you refer to that in the expression, it'll just do it. Okay. But if you have a DRV, you can do oops, you can do just Nix build on the DRV, and, and it'll build um, that's minus the minus the jug. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you always use the, the, the terminal without the cursor. <laughs> uh, so usually it looks like this, and the green is not very nice. So okay. I and, and actually it doesn't. It usually um, the cursor. Uh, usually it looks like this, oh. and and but black on white is is a bit nicer, I think. For, oh, this for, is nice. It's nice. Yeah. We, we, we like the course. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, I just didn't sort that out all the way. Uh, <laughs> that'd be pretty gutsy, I think. Uh, so, all right, so here we go. And this actually demonstrates something kind of weird. So it said it needed it. But when I tried to build that get text derivation, it actually had to fetch stuff from the internet. And the reason that happened is because I don't actually need that for my regular system. That's a dependency mm -hmm. of one of my dependencies. Yeah, okay. And so I can get to my dependency. I don't need its dependencies. Any other questions? Another and the other way around? Oh, sure. Um, uh, this is a deriver? Yeah, deriver. OK, so say I have a store path, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to know its derivation. Uh, there you go. I pass next store dash query dash dash deriver. And then the store path, the, the output path, so and it'll tell me the derivation. Yeah. And there are also the, the, the dash dash referrals, which are those packages that refer to, to it. Yeah, yeah, oh, so that's a cool. Um, let's do that with bash, because that might be more interesting. So we've got this, uh, this bash, which is just my regular bash, mm -hmm. and um, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and so uh, what on my system depends on that path um, refers. So we can query what refers to a store path, mm -hmm. and um, here's everything on my system that, that depends on uh, on that bash. This is kind of a curious list. <laughs> you would, you might think that it, more things would depend on that bash. Yeah, but they have their own bash. Exposed. Yeah, so in Nix packages there are two bashes. Well, probably more, but yeah. the important ones is that there's a, a regular, the standard bash it uses to build, mm -hmm. and then there's a separate bash which is used interactively. Okay. And the reason we do that is that the non-interactive one has way fewer dependencies. And actually what's happening here, what these things are that depends on this bash, these are different versions of NixOS systems. So these are actually my server systems. I have my whole entire server systems on my my local laptop, because I can. Um, yeah, so that's that's a, maybe a later talk. Any other questions? Let's um let's take a look at uh like why does this system path depend on that bash? Why depends, yeah. <laughs> so we put in one path, we put in a second path, and uh, we can see. So in this XOS system dash Ogden, which is my, uh, my backup server at home, we have uh, this path. Inside, that's a directory. Inside that directory is a file called activate. And inside that file called activate, there is a ln-sfin. Uh, LN that bash into uh, another location in my uh, uh, in my system. So wait, what is uh, that's a path from uh, that's 
a string from that's extracted from a, a string mm -hmm. context? Yeah. Oh, oh no. So this is actually using binary grep. Okay. Uh, for example, um, LDD. Which bash? Uh, why does a uh, bash depend on lib history? Um, this might be interesting, uh, especially without um, my critic. You can go with white on black. Nah. All right. So I've got why <laughs> depends on that interactive bash the lib history. And uh, so bin bash, uh, this is probably like uh, our path in there. But I didn't understand, like, would you, for example, in that case, in, in, the, in the expressions you've shown us before, or you would use CP? So would that Y depends show you the line of the expression or in, of the derivation hmm. in which CP is used and tell you, um, no, bin utils are not what no. is needed? So let's take a look at that. So we have, uh, mm, oh cool, SMTP style. Uh, nope. Uh, hmm. All right. Maybe we should take a break. Sure. Yeah. Let's let's take a break, and we'll uh, we'll play with that later. But essentially, the idea is that um, that's a build time dependence, not a runtime. Yeah. Oh, uh, starvation. Uh, starvation. Uh, starvation. Yeah.